We are performing a diagnostic arthroscopy in the beach chair position in a right shoulder. Looking anteriorly from the standard posterior viewing portal, we probe the long head of the biceps tendon at its attachment to the superior labrum. Probing the biceps assesses for biceps instability. We rotate the arthroscope inferiorly to examine the middle glenohumeral ligament. We can assess the subscapularis tendon as it is immediately anterior to the middle glenohumeral ligament. We drive the arthroscope anteriorly and inferiorly to examine the anterior inferior labrum and glenoid cartilage. Next, we visualize the inferior glenohumeral ligament seen here with the probe. We then rotate inferiorly and posteriorly to visualize the posterior recess. Beginning at the inferior aspect of the labrum, we advance the arthroscope superiorly to assess the entire posterior labrum. At this point, our evaluation of the glenoid aspect is complete. We begin our assessment of the humeral aspect of the joint space by examining the attachments of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus tendons to the humeral head. Here, a partial tear can be visualized. We rotate the arthroscope posteriorly and inferiorly to assess the articular surface of the humeral head, including the bare area. Finally, we are able to visualize the capsule and its attachments to the humeral head. We are performing a diagnostic arthroscopy in the lateral decubitus position in a right shoulder. Looking anteriorly from the standard posterior viewing portal, we examine the long head of the biceps tendon at its attachment to the superior labrum. Below the biceps tendon, we can see a tear in the anterior superior labrum. We visualize the middle glenohumeral ligament and subscapularis tendon in the front of the joint. We examine the anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament followed by the entire inferior glenohumeral ligament. We assess the anterior inferior labrum and glenoid cartilage followed by the posterior labrum. From our starting position, we begin our assessment of the humeral aspect of the joint space by examining the attachments of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus tendons to the humeral head. We continue to rotate posteriorly and inferiorly to visualize the articular surface of the humeral head, including the bare area. In this position, we assess the capsule and the attachments of the glenohumeral ligaments to the humeral head. We rotate the arthroscope anteriorly and medially to examine the posterior recess before returning to our starting position. This is the subacromial space of a left shoulder in the beach chair position. Inflamed bursal tissue is readily evident on initial examination. Here, the corcoacromial ligament can be seen in the background. A spinal needle is used to create the lateral portal parallel with the undersurface of the acromion. A motorized shaver is introduced and a limited bursectomy is performed. The bursa is removed until the rotator cuff tendons are visualized here at the bottom of the screen. The bursa is removed from the anterior subdeltoid space and lateral gutter. If present, a rotator cuff tear is visualized, debrided, and prepared for repair. A motorized shaver or burr can be used to define the borders of the acromion and remove the lateral overhang. Electrocautery can be used to coagulate bleeding vessels and release the CA ligament. The arthroscope is placed in the lateral portal. The rotator cuff is visualized and the tear pattern is assessed. A high-speed burr is introduced through the posterior portal. An acromioplasty is performed using a posterior cutting block technique. The acromioplasty is complete when the acromion is flat and the clavicle is visualized. The rotator cuff is repaired based on tear pattern and surgeon preference. The burr is introduced through the anterior portal and a distal clavicle resection is performed. Take care to leave the posterior superior AC ligaments intact. This completes our assessment of the subacromial space.